I'm here with James Shelton. He's one of the SR-71 pilots. What was it like to fly the SR-71? Well, it was a great experience there. Uh, and I felt very fortunate to have been selected because there weren't that many throughout the Air Force. And um, I would describe it as when you're out at Mach 3, it's like driving your car at 90 miles an hour and then you back off to 30 miles an hour when you're subsonic. You know, when you're 30 miles an hour, you can tune the radio, things like that. But at 90 miles an hour, you keep your eyes focused and concentrating on what's happening. That's this airplane. When you're subsonic, you can tune the radio, take your hands off, almost fly itself. But at Mach 3, when you're out there, you better be right on top of watching everything that's happening, the engine instruments, the inlet instruments, what's happening to the airplane. Because things happen very rapidly when you're traveling 3,100 miles per second. Well, feet per second, I'm sorry, 3,100 feet per second. In the SR-71, you wear this space suit. What's it like to be in this, and for hours? Well, yes, I, I did fly it for 11 hours and 20 minutes, so I was in the suit over 12 hours. Um, one thing about the suits, they were all kind of custom designed for everybody. I had a special suit because I have longer arms in there, and so... It's kind of like an old glove. Initially it feels uncomfortable, but after s several years of wearing it, it's sort of like an old glove. Um, you can go ahead and there's a little food port over here on the side so we could put water in there and we could, so we could drink water. Um, you could put tube food in there. Uh, then they had the urine collection capability here in the suit. Um, so it, it's not as claustrophobic as people think because you kind of get used, can get used to it. What about the temperature? Um, the suit and aircraft, the air conditioning system on the SR-71 is designed to keep the crew comfortable because the airplane heats up at Mach 3. There are places on the airplane that are over 500 degrees Fahrenheit on that. So the cold air comes into the suit over here and you can adjust the amount of cold air you have coming in and then there are tubes inside the suit that go down and get cold air to the extremity areas. Um, if for some reason the suit feels like it's pressing on you too much they have the capability on this side over here to stop some of the air coming out. Normally it's a kind of flow in flow out but if you were to lose cabin pressure, then it would stop flowing out and the suit would inflate and you'd pull this little ball here to keep your helmet from popping off your head. So when it was, if it felt uncomfortable on a position, you'd pump it up a little bit and then kind of wiggle, wiggle a little bit. They tell one story, and I don't know how true it is, but one of the Lockheed test pilots liked his suit so loose he could pump it up, take his arm out here and scratch himself and put it back into the arm. Now, I don't... I don't think it, that really happened, but that was one of the stories going around. What about a diet, getting ready for, to be in this suit for that period of time, as well as sleep? How is that dealt with? Um, the sleep, I was always one that took a Sikonol, one Sikonol sleeping tablet before, before every mission. Go ahead. That way I knew I got to sleep, got plenty of rest. Um, the fluid intake, you tried to go ahead and on the early days before they had the urine collection capability, you would basically try to dehydrate yourself, which wasn't good. Then you would always have um, a high protein, low residue type of diet of steak and eggs. So I ended up with eating a lot of steak and a lot of, a lot of eggs. But with a high residue diet, dehydrated yourself a little bit, uh, you didn't have to worry about normal body functions while you were in the airplane because the early days it was four to six hour missions. On the 11 hour and 20 minute mission though we had to go ahead and continue to supply fluids to the body and tube food. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, no, it was if time could stand still I think everybody associated with the program would want that to happen. Now I, I keep telling myself, well, yes, I could go hop in the cockpit today and fly away, but then reality sets in and realize that instead of being 100 miles in front of the airplane, I'd be 200 miles behind the airplane with my reactions.